everybody, Scout Crafter here again. It's Wednesday. Oh, we got a few things going on. Sit back, relax, and uh, <laughs> got a big snowstorm going on. Everything's happening at once. Anyway, let me tell you what happened. I come down today to start my little shop experience, right? And I always, you know, check the furnace because I have a manual water. You got to add water manually. I don't have an automatic water fill. I go over to add water. I do a walk around. I see water leak, you know, a puddle. Look, let me tell you something. Anybody with an old furnace, that is like the pucker factor is about eight when you see something like that. Man, water on the bottom. I said, what is it? Turns out, thank goodness, it was this valve that was uh, leaking, but uh, it was that valve was only changed a few years ago. I don't know, the burner guy changed it for some reason or something, but uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about these valves, you know. I, I don't know. I'm not a fan. Let's check it out. Now, this was the actual valve that was on there. I replaced it with a 40-year-old one that I found on the street, but this is called a globe valve or a pressure valve, and basically how it works is inside of here, if you open it up, uh, there's a, a washer that presses against a, uh, a little like almost like a seed in there, you know, a hole and it, uh, it restricts the, uh, the pressure, the water coming through and, and you could seal it off. But, uh, these, uh, you know, they go back a long time. I believe the older ones were better quality than the new ones, but this is still a, a, a brass, uh, material that it's made from and and the washers are cheap enough to replace but my question is that uh for the plumbers the professional plumbers out there if the, you know i never liked these i always preferred uh quarter turn valves or gate valves and uh i know it's a different kind of valve but i prefer them the quality wise but um, my question is to the professional plumbers is that every once in a while I'll see these, especially when they're installed and all the ones that were installed on my burner, they wrap these with Teflon tape around here. And, uh, I was always wondering, do you use the Teflon tape as a professional plumber or do you use, uh, uh, the, uh, plumbing, uh, dope or what do you use when you're putting these valves on just a question for the rest of us that aren't professionals but like i said I, i've really never been a fan of these type valves before because they can go okay, so we dodged that bullet for a while uh next up uh i was on my walk last night i go for my walk anywhere between three and five sometimes yeah about three to five a.m i go for my walk and uh, I'm the only one walking on the streets. There's no cars out. You know, sometimes I feel like when I'm doing a walk late at night like that, I feel like, remember them old movies about the last guy on earth, you know? <laughs> That's what it feels like, you know? And it's it's nice, but, you know, being that uh, where I live in New York, you know, sometimes you're always, uh, you, you got to have eyes in the back of your head because, you know, you know, you never know who's out at that time. Only crazy people are out at that time. So... Uh, I was walking by and they, the trash had already come and gone except for some of the recycle that was still out and I saw this nice stack of books that somebody had uh, tied up nicely and put on the the curb there you know and it was tight I said you know I hate throwing out books you know do you uh, you know books is oh in my family books have always been kind of a precious resource and it's something books are, are one of those things that really don't go bad you know I mean unless it's like an old encyclopedia where the you know things change over the years but you know this it's hard to throw out a book and when you see one and I walked by it but then I was like a half a mile away and I said I'm gonna regret not taking that because it was an old cookbook let's check okay, it okay so when I saw these in the garbage out first of all, I was I was attracted isn't that beautiful cord <laughs> rope I love that braided nylon. So I said, okay, tied it nice, two nice square knots. I said, whoever threw this out did not want these to go in the garbage. But they're basically cookbooks, a few different cookbooks. and and uh, But the one I saw that I liked was this one. I said, wow, look at, I could see it. It was vintage. I said, let me check. I got to take it because of this. I said, if I don't take it for this book... I have a lot of my grandmother's cookbooks, you know, cookbooks always. I said, if I grab it, I can always give it to my girlfriend or my sister or someone. But I said, let me check it out. And I can even, you smell it? You know what them old books smell like. This now, one has. The first thing I notice about this book, you could look here, 1959. Now, let's go back in time for a minute. Remember 1959? Heart attacks were big. 
They weren't into healthy cooking, <laughs> you know, as far as what we call healthy cooking today. There was a lot of, uh, you know, they were still using lard. They were still using, if you're looking here, you know, butter, a lot of butter, a lot of, you know, cre heavy cream. But, you know, come on. Come on now, that was the, the the stuff tasted totally different back then. You know, I was thinking the other day, I feel bad. There are people out there that are watching this channel that never tasted in their life, have never tasted bakery, rye bread, or something like that from a good old fashioned bakery. I mean, if you've been buying supermarket breads and stuff like that, you don't you, you don't know what you're missing. I, I know some people do the homemade stuff, that's great. But if you go to a really good, like we used to have the old German or the old Jewish bakeries where these guys, they knew how to, they, they were masters of their craft. And when you had, a, you know, you, you didn't need butter on that bread. You can eat it right out of the bag. In fact, you know, you'd be driving home, you'd reach into the bag and grab off a piece. And anyway, this is an era back then when they had this. And I was looking at some of the ingredients and I was thinking that, how funny is it, you know, what they were adding to their food, you know, as far as con uh, compared to what we eat today. There was a lot of sauces back then, remember? You know, fondues and creams and, you know, no wonder that in the 60s we were dropping like flies from heart attacks. Look at this kid. He was considered skinny back in the day. Yeah, so, uh, but an interesting book and I just thought, I said, I can't let this go until I, until I look and bring it and check out some of the recipes, uh, I don't know. And you really, if you cook according to the exact recipes in these books, you do get that old time taste. And like I said, if you've never had old fashioned bread or uh, you're, you're missing hey, out. Finally, we're getting to today's subject, which is I want to talk a little bit about fasteners. I love hardware and fasteners. And I think the only one that's on par with loving hardware and fasteners like I do is uh, Reggie on the road. Reggie, he's, he's a big fastener guy too. But uh, so. Uh, what I want to talk about, uh, a good friend of the show by the name of Chase Greeley had written to me and he says, you know, about he, he loves square nuts. And I said, you know something, I love square nuts. And I want to just talk a little bit about the square fasteners and why, you know, they've gone kind of, they've been replaced by the hex fastener, but they're, they're better. They're better in so many ways. Now, Let's this is check just it out. a few of the overflow uh, square nuts that I have. I do have a, a, a large assortment of square hardware. And let me just show you that we're going to take a square nut here. Now, when you think of square, you know, it usually square nuts and square bolts go together, your square headed bolts. And, and I'll tell you why they're such, in my opinion, a superior fastener. First of all, let's take a look at this. What a beautiful design, huh? The bottom, and this is a vintage one, the bottom, as you can see, is a flat area. So there is a top and a bottom, unlike with a hex nut. Some hex nuts don't have a top and a bottom. This one definitely does. This would be the bottom, and the top here is chamfered, and it has a circular uh, feature on top here. Now, uh, the whole reason they came out with washies years ago was because uh, to stop the corners of the square nut from digging into softer materials. But that can also be help you because it almost acts as a lock nut if you don't use a washer because these corners can dig into wood or something like that and they won't turn out. Um, the square nut does have a, a greater holding or uh, tightening capacity than a uh, hex nut. Now here is uh, the same side-by-side -side comparison of a hex nut compared to a square nut. This is both the same size. This the size happens to be half inch by 13 threads per inch. First of all, I want you to notice the side wall here, uh, the thickness here of the nut. At its thinnest point here, over here, look how thick this is compared to the thinnest point of the hex nut. You could see quite a difference. Uh, also, you could see the overall beefiness of the nut. In fact, it looks so beefy that this hole looks smaller than this one, doesn't it? It's almost like an optical Another illusion. cool feature of the square fastener, you know this is a... Uh, this is actually a, uh, a nut from a, a New York City bus, and um, this is for the uh, a lug nut, more or less. And what they have, in order to see, when they torque these down, they got to be torqued down to 600 pounds. And when they torque these down, they put these, they heat these up and stretch them over here. And this is called a, uh, a torque flag or torque indicator. You can see here the company says wheel check. But they squeeze this on here and they point this actually to the uh, next nut, you know, so you know where this is supposed to be. Because if this loosens up, this will be a visual indicator that it's loosening up. That's why you'll see these on a lot of buses and, uh, and trucks. Now back in the railroad days, they used to use square nuts and the same reason. 
because it's four sided, they would line them up so that they would all face, uh, you know, flat on top. And if you saw the nut turn this way, you know, you would know that the nut is loosened up because of uh, of the shape of the nut. Where you know it would be very hard to do with a uh, with a hex nut like that. So they use that a lot for indicating. Now, one of the reasons they also went to a hex nut design is because of engagement. Now. This is your, your regular square nut, okay? Now, if you notice, to engage this nut, I have to go 90 degrees. You see, I have to go all the way over here, from here to here, to engage it each time, okay? 90 degrees I have to turn. Whereas with a uh, hex nut, I only have to go 60 degrees, so it's from here to here. You see, it's a, it's a lot less that I can engage that nut again without going all the way up to 90 degrees. So that's one reason they went with the hex. But, you know, you, you do kind of give up a lot. And also, like I said, once something becomes the industry standard, these things get kicked to the wayside. But, uh, you know, there's still some beauty in, in the Next square Next up, look, let's look at nut engagement. When you put a, uh, a regular open-end wrench onto a nut, look how much engagement you have with each side of the fastener. Okay, you have almost double, here's the square compared, look, we have almost double of the uh, the square nut compared to the hex nut because of, of the engagement. So you're less likely to, if you round one of these off, you really have to be trying to. Whereas to round one of these off is, as we all know, it's a little bit easier than we'd like to admit. Okay, next up, a lot of people will talk about sockets, you know, that you can't use sockets with square nuts. Well, not necessarily. They do make, this is here called an eight point socket. And uh, this is made for square fasteners, you know, any type. And, and they do have them all different sizes for square fasteners. So you can get sockets for square fasteners. Uh, you'll still see square nut fasteners on a lot of industrial applications like at the telephone company or railroad. Wait a minute, this is filthy. We can do better than that. Okay, that's better. I, I think I'm the only one that gets just as much enjoyment out of cleaning up hardware as I do cleaning up tools. But... Uh, Take a look at this here. You can see here, uh, again, uh, when you're, you, uh, this is a considered a lag bolt and, you know, that requires a, a, tr a tremendous amount of torque to get this into the wood unless you pre-drill it. But it, even then, it requires a lot of torque and it's a heavy-duty fastener and they have a square head on top. Now, these fasteners are still used in a lot of applications and I'm telling you, until you've taken a wrench and tightened down on a square nut, you just don't know the pleasure there is. In, in fasteners. I mean, these are, these are it. Square nuts, I'm telling you, just the way to go. So Chase, you're not the only one that finds old uh, square nuts and uh, vintage hardware uh, interesting. And I hope you found that interesting. Uh, let's see what we got okay, next. Okay, next up, Toby7, good friend of the show said, you know, I noticed you have a little bit of patina building up on that copper. And, uh, and he's right. And you know what? Uh, at least seven or eight of you agreed with him because you hit the like button to his comments. So let's take care of this. I want to show you anytime you want to address a cap or something like that, it's really important that you do this step. First, we're going to wrap some tape around here. And you don't have to go with the tin foil because we're not going to really be putting heavy pressure. But you got to wrap tape and then hit this with the razor blade so that because this black that comes off of any polished material will stain the wood. Okay, you can see we uh, taped it up here. We're nowhere near the wood that no wood is exposed. And we're going to buff this out. Copper buffs out very nicely. Okay, Toby7. Is this better? Just more to your liking here. This is, uh, obviously, this is, uh, copper is such a pretty color. And I use this all the time, so that's why I really didn't uh, do the, the polishing on it. But there we go. It's back the way it should be. Okay, uh, so that was a bit of a mosh today. You know, uh, I think I might have spoiled my cat too because uh, that stray cat, Pipes, uh, this guy, he, every day he wants to come in and he wants me to make him a scrambled egg. A little, He likes a little bit of milk on the side. Then he likes to sit down and watch a couple bird videos from YouTube. On <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm a slave to this little guy. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. Hope you have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye.